so I won't. <laughs> Y'all waiting on him to sing. I need you to sing it. Somebody knows it. Say it again. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You're welcome. Come flood this right place. Here. And feel the atmosphere. This, this, this. Feel this. Your glory, your glory. Your glory. God is what our hearts long for. To be overcome. By your prayer. I want him to flood this place right here. Now, now you're thinking about a building, but I need him to flood my whole being. My heart, my mind, my mouth, uh-oh. My thoughts, my actions, my it flood. Consume me, God, so that everything I say, everything that I do, everything that I think, the look on my face reflects you and not what I'm going through. Flood me, God. Ooh, good Lord. Does anybody sense the Holy Spirit in the room this morning besides me, or am I the only one that got it today? Okay, some of y'all got it. Some of y'all got it. Some of you see him in the room. They sing that song, he's in the room. I'm telling you right now, he's in the room right now. Amen. Grab your Bibles with me this morning. I want to jump in the Word because what I, I, I also see and hear is that what they've been singing is going to line up with what I think I'm going to share with you. So grab your Bibles with me this morning, and let's do this. I know you've been on your feet, but would you stand with me one more time for the reading of the Word today? We're going to the book of Jude. Jude. Some of you are like, I don't know where that's at. Go to Revelation and go back one. Okay? Go to Revelation and go back one. We're going, you know, we got to get back in the habit of bringing an actual Bible into church. Um, I think we get lazy sometimes. We don't know where stuff is anymore. It's real easy to go to it in an app and find it. But however you got it, even if you're looking on the screen, we're going to Jude, uh, the book of Jude. You know, there's only one chapter. It's just 25 verses. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to read the whole thing. Can y'all handle it? Y'all good on your feet for just a second? All right. I want to read this whole thing. He said, I, Jude, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. You can listen in whatever version, read along in whatever version you have if you want to Look at what I'm reading. It's on the screen, but I'm in the Message Bible. He said, I, Jude, am a slave to Jesus Christ and brother to James, writing to those loved by God the Father, called and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Watch this. He said, relax. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> you know, if I didn't say anything else this morning, I think that would be enough for you to go home and feel good. Just relax. Everything's going to be all right. Rest. Everything's coming together. That's a word for somebody this year. Everything's coming together for you. He said, open your hearts. Love is on the way. He said, dear friends, I've dropped everything to write you, uh, to write you about this life of salvation that we have in common. I have to write insisting, begging that you, watch this, fight with everything you have in you for this faith entrusted to us as a gift to guard and cherish. What has happened, what has happened is, is that, you'll get it in a minute. Some people have infiltrated our ranks, our scriptures warned us this would happen, who beneath their pious skin are shameless scoundrels. I love Jude, man, he's making it plain. Their design is to replace the sheer grace of our God with sheer license, which means doing away with Jesus Christ, our one and only master. He said in verse 5, watch this, I'm laying this out as clearly as I can, even though you once knew all this well enough and shouldn't need reminding. Here it is in brief. 
the master saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Later, he destroyed those who defected. And you know the story of the angels who didn't stick to their post, abandoning it for other darker missions. But they are now chained and jailed in a black hole until the great judgment day. Sodom and Gomorrah, which went to sexual rack and ruin along with the surrounding cities that added just like them, are another example. Burning and burning and never burning up. They, stir, they serve still as a stock warning. This is exactly the same program of these latest infiltrators. Dirty sex. Whoop. Rule and rulers thrown out. Glory dragged in the mud. The archangel Michael who went to the mat with the devil as they fought over the body of Moses wouldn't have dared level him with a blasphemous curse but simply said, no you don't. God will take care of you. That's a good word right there. But these people sneer at anything they can't understand and by doing whatever they feel like doing, living by animal instinct only, they participate in their own destruction. He said, I'm fed up with them. They've gone down Cain's road. They've been sucked into Balaam's error by greed. They're canceled out in Korah's rebellion. These people are warts on your love feast as you worship and eat together. They're giving you a black eye, carousing shamelessly, grabbing anything that didn't nail down. Watch this. He said, they're puffs of smoke pushed by gusts of wind. Late autumn trees stripped clean of leaf and fruit, doubly dead, pulled up by the roots. Wild ocean waves leaving nothing on the beach but the foam of their shame. Lost stars in outer space on their way to a black hole. Enoch, the seventh after Adam, prophesied of them. He said, look, the master comes with thousands of holy angels to bring judgment against them. All convicting each person of every defiling act of shameless sacrilege, of every dirty word that they have spewed of their pious filth. These are the grumpers. That's a good word. The grumpers, the belly achers, grabbing for the biggest piece of the pie, talking big, saying anything they think will get them ahead. But, somebody say, but. But, but remember, dear friends, that the apostles of our Master Jesus Christ told us this would happen. In the last days, there will be people who don't take these things seriously anymore. They'll treat them like a joke and make a religion of their own whims and lusts. These are the ones who split churches, thinking only of themselves. There's nothing to them, no sign of the Spirit. But you, dear friends, carefully build yourselves up in this most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit, Staying right at the center of God's love, keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready for the mercy of our Master Jesus Christ. This is the unending life, the real life. Watch this. Go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Go after those who take the wrong way. Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. Y'all going to get this in a minute. The sin itself stinks to high heaven. And now to him who can keep you on your feet. Look at somebody and tell him, I'm still standing. Standing tall in his bright presence, fresh and celebrating to our one God, our only Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Master, be glory, majesty, strength, and rule before all time and now and to the end of all time. Yes, yeah. somebody say yeah to that. Amen. It's a lot. And there's a lot packed into all of that, and I don't think I can unpack all that this morning in one service, but I'm going to talk to you from the subject real quick. Um, keep building. God isn't done with you. I need you to look at somebody around you and tell them, you need to keep building. Yeah, you need to keep building. Don't give up yet. Don't give in. I know it was hard last year, but you know what? God isn't done with you yet. He's still got a plan for your life. Y'all ready to get in this word today? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in the house. We thank you for the word that's about to go forth. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that it'll go forth with clarity and with boldness. It'll hit the target for which it has been intended. It will not return void. And as a result, there will be miracle signs and wonders. There will be souls saved and minds changed today. In this house, in Jesus' name, amen. amen, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody put your hands together this morning, and can we give God one more big praise before y'all sit down? 
Y'all a little bit too quiet for me already today, and there's a lot of people in this room this morning. So I need y'all to take about 15 seconds and send up the best shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, uh, it ain't loud enough in here yet. I need one more good shout for the Lord. Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, my Adonai, my Shalom, my, my peace, my help, my everything. I said my everything. Woo! All right, all right, all right. Nudge your neighbor and tell him, put your seatbelt on. It's about to get tight in here. It's about to get rough. Y'all look good today, Live Vote. This is a good-looking crowd for the first Sunday of this year. I pray you keep coming back the rest of this year. You've made your resolution to be in church on the first Sunday. You did it. Now, how about the rest of the year? Let's go beyond the, the, the first Sunday. Amen? All right, let's get into this. Last week, I was sharing with you some thoughts about uh, closing out last year, beginning this year, and I was sharing with you that I believe that there are, there are shifts that happen throughout every year that have the potential to redirect and nudge us on or off the plan that God has for us. Now, I, I, am, I am of the opinion and I believe wholeheartedly in God's divine timetable and His calendar and the powerful significance of uh, the realignment that comes with the fall feast, which is why we do a Daniel fast every year at that time. Uh, specifically as we move into the Feast of Trumpets. I believe that is a major mark in every year, but I also believe that there are shifts that happen all throughout the year. Now, that one marks the turnover of a new biblical year and a spiritual year. But I've also shared with you that we live in a world that we are not of. And with that being said, I feel like we have shifted into another phase, another stage of building our lives. Jew said that Jew said that we need to carefully build ourselves up. And if you've ever built a home or, or watched a home being built, you know that there are phases and stages of construction that you go through. And I shared a little bit last week. I didn't bring any props this week, but just to remind you that in a new home, the paint doesn't go on the wall until the sheetrock has been has been hung and finished. The sheetrock doesn't go up until all the electrical and the plumbing has been finished. The electrical doesn't get wired until the framing has been finished. You can't even frame a house until you have a foundation. So there are stages of building. I think, this is me, you can take it for what it's worth, but I think that the same is true for our own lives. I think you are a work in progress. Everybody say that. Say, I'm a work in progress. I am. And, and what I want you to get from that is, that is that in your life, God is not building chicken coops. He's building a skyscraper. Oh, y'all going to... I'm not a chicken coop kind of guy. I'm a skyscraper kind of guy. Because that's what God is developing. That's what God is building in me. I'm not building something shaky that can be blown over by a wind. God is building something in all of us. You are not chicken coop kind of people. You're skyscraper kind of people. Does that make sense? Skyscraper is what I said. I think, this is just me, but I think that some of us have passed the inspection as we crossed over into this new calendar year, I think you passed the inspection from one stage of building and we are now ready to enter into the next phase. The plan, the blueprint of your life is, is, is being realized and whether you know it or not, it is coming to fruition in your life. But, but I, wanna, I also want to let you know that it requires patience. It requires time. It requires work. And what's really hard to accept is that some phases of building take more out of you than others do. Now what I mean by that is that some stages of life um, take more out of you than you expected for that to take out of you. Some life events can exhaust you. They can leave you feeling empty and alone. They can demand more than you were prepared to give. 
And there are some things in life that they just leave you with just a little bit of strength left. I need a real witness right here. Remember last week we shared with you about Revelation 3 and 7 and he said what he opens no one can shut and what he shuts no one can open. He said, I know your deeds. I see, you pla- I see I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. And he said, I know that you have little strength. He said, but you've kept my word. And you have not denied my name. Now, I, I, I don't want you to miss a really valid point here in that specific text. Because if you're not careful, you can miss the fact that he's telling them, I know that you have just a little strength left, but the fact that you are still here means that you made it. You might have, have been left with little strength, but at least it was enough. You got to get that one. It might be a little bit, but at least it was enough to get you through that last season of life. I would even submit to you that, 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 that being tired but still winning is a far cry from being defeated and losing. That fatigue is not defeat. Oh, my Lord. Sometimes, sometimes you will come out bloodied. Sometimes you will come out broken. Sometimes you'll come out heartbroken and confused. But the real test is whether or not you kept the faith in all the hell that you went through. Because that's the real deal. Sometimes you will end up like that. But you have to remember that, 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 that every now and then you got to remind yourself, I might have went down, but I didn't go out. Because you kept the faith. Because you didn't backslide and step out or step away when the going got tough. And because you held on, watch me now, I think you're ready for another shift again in your life. It was tough. But it was but the but the but the the pressure stretched you just a little bit, and it made you stronger on the back end than you were when the whole thing started. Am I talking to anybody else besides myself this Sunday morning? Because what you've got to realize is that in your weakness is when you fully realize that his strength is and was made perfect in your life. That's how I look back over my life and I realize sometimes I don't really know how I made it through that. Because if it would have been an Aaron Coward strength, I would not still be standing right now. It would have wiped me out. But that's where I'm reminded that in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. When I didn't have enough, he had more than enough. But I want to take it a step further, because here you stand now on the first Sunday of this, this, this 2024, you're ready. You're ready. We come in here and we, we get excited when we hear things like more in 24. And, and let's be honest, can we be real today? You don't really feel much different. You don't really see anything different. Because it's one of these moments that you just got to know that something's different. Mm-hmm. And now that you're, you're here, you're ready for change. You're ready to switch your thinking. You're ready to change your mind on some issues. You, 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 you are ready to do those things. But you have to make a conscious decision to let go of the hammer and the sheetrock drill and move on to the next tool. The next phase of building this life that God has so graciously given to us. You have to decide. I need y'all to get that. Decide to move into your next phase of the plan that God has for you. And that's the hard part. Can we be real for a sec? That's the hard part. Actually having the willpower and the courage and the conviction to do it. To shift into the next phase of building. It sounds good, right? Sounds easy enough. Sounds exciting when you're in here in this room with 700 other people that are shouting and we're all in agreement with the word. But when you get home, it's when you get home and you get down to the nitty gritty and the pressure of daily living gets in the way. It it begs the question. Y'all ready? Will you actually get up and pray and read your word? Will you actually show up for discipleship? 
Will you actually set aside 10% and give tithe from your income? Will you actually take the plunge and serve somewhere in the body of Christ? Let me go deeper. Will you actually turn the other cheek when others are talking about you? Just get off the church stuff. Will you actually, uh-oh, bless those that curse you and pray for those who mistreat you like the word says? Oh, I'll go deeper. Can you tell your best friend that you ain't going to the bar with them anymore? Can you tell that person that you're dating that y'all aren't having sex anymore and you're waiting for marriage? Boy, getting real quiet in here on the first Sunday in 2024. So do you, do you really want to serve God better or is that just something that sounds good when you're in church around all of us? Oh, I know. I told you it was going to get rough. Will, will, uh, let's, let's, will you really accept the shut door when God shuts it? Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Will you receive the correction when it comes or do you just know everything? Because if not, then watch me here, you can't build nothing. Will you serve God better this year than you have in your whole life? Man, these are tough questions. Y'all got quiet because I know that it sounds like a lot. But those are some of the questions that you will have to make decisions on if you are going to get ready to build in the next phase of the plan that God has for you. And if you are not willing to be disciplined, Oh, God. Intentional. You'll shout about stuff that you'll never see. Nigel, it's just me and you today, bro. You'll, 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 you'll come in and shout about it, but you won't see it. Why? Because you'll stay stuck right where you are right now on January 7, 2024, and come January 1, 2025, you will still be in the same place in life, stuck in the same stage, still looking at the sheetrock, waiting on the painter to show up. When the reality is, is that you should have moved on by now. Oh, can we be real just for like three seconds right here? The real reality is, is that a lot of us should have already moved on from where we are right now, but we didn't do what we needed. Never mind, I'm just going to. I'll just preach to me and Nigel today. If you want something, you better do something. If you want different, you got to do different. If you want the same, then keep doing the same thing. Because I refuse to, to revolve around this insane idea that if I do the same thing, I'm going to get something different. Look at somebody tell them, I'm not doing that this year. I'm, I'm, I'm changing my mind on some stuff and I'm moving on. Some of y'all looking at me a little strange today. Like, shouldn't you come in here and tell us how blessed we're going to be in 2024? <laughs> well, I can, but you may not be if you don't do anything different with you. Never mind. I just <laughs> keep building. That's what you got to do. But you can't stay stuck in one stage of life and never move on to the next stage of life. If you want to stay stuck in that place, you can stay stuck in that place. But as for me in my house, Oh, let me go a little bit further and tell you, ask for me in this house. Some of y'all going to get real uncomfortable because we're going to be moving on in the things of God and you're still... Anyway, everybody say discipline. discipline. Now say it again. Say discipline. discipline. It's an ugly word, isn't it? Ugly word. That's like a cuss word in my book. Discipline. Discipline. Yeah, because what that means is, is that, is that you got to make yourself do something that you really don't want to do. That means that you may have to say no to flesh. Oh. It means you may have to say no to doubt and worry. It means that you might have to say no to foolishness. I, discipline, the word means a code of conduct, a system of conduct. It means to train yourself to do something in a controlled and habitual way. Well, you know what the root of the word discipline is, the word disciple. That's what a disciple is, right, Mr. Roy? I mean, that's what it is. A, a, dis a disciple is a disciplined person, meaning that without control, 
without a code of behavior that we can't be disciples of anything. Okay, I'll give you some scripture. Proverbs 16, 32. You ready? Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. Proverbs 25 and 28. Like a city whose walls are broken through is a person who lacks self-control. That means if you don't have any discipline in your life, you open yourself up to anything and everything. Without discipline, you'll have health problems. You'll have distraction, procrastination. You'll have financial problems because you can't pay your bills on time and you charge too much on the credit cards. You get in all this debt. You'll have clutter in your house. You ever just had clutter and stuff piling up everywhere and you become immune to seeing it? It's like you're blind. My kids are like that. They throw stuff all over the house and I'll walk through and see it, but they don't see it. And I say, you left this downstairs and they say, no, I didn't. And I say, come back down here. Let me show you something. I had to walk one of them in the bathroom this week and show them the mess that they could not see. Don't look at me like that because y'all know you got kids. Some of y'all got kids. You understand what I'm saying? The problem is, is that without discipline and without some intentionality, we become blind. Y'all going to talk to me or what today? We become blind to the very thing that God's trying to clean up in our, in our lives. And we break down our walls and we allow anything that goes and anything to happen. And then you wonder why your kids talk back to you. Okay, I'm not, I don't know. I may be, but when you have a made up mind. That you're not going to let nothing keep you stuck in unhealthy, dysfunctional cycles of life. That is when you begin to make progress and you shift into your next. Titus said it like this. He said, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches, uh, the grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness, worldly passions. And to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. So you're telling me that's what grace is for? That it's not about giving us a pass to be foolish? That it's the reason that we should say no to the foolishness in the first place? Yes. Look at somebody say, of course, yes. That's exactly what it's for. Because watch this. Foolishness can show up in any area of your life. It's not just in your kids, it's in you too. It's in our eating habits, it's in our spending habits, it's in, it's in, in, it's in how we tolerate and allow what goes on in our house. Am I preaching to anybody or y'all just kind of shocked today on first Sunday? It, it shows up, watch me, it shows up in how you truly serve God. How you live for him. How you're, not just on Sunday. I know you're good on Sunday. Well, what about Friday night? What about Saturday? What about Monday morning? What about tomorrow morning when you get to work and they tick you off real good? And you got a, cho a few choice words that ain't in the Bible for them. What, what happens then? Can you be disciplined? Say discipline. You got to be disciplined. You know that... That, that, that you have to be disciplined to serve God for real, right? Because I promise you, <laughs> I'm about to go down the rabbit trail. I know I am. I, I promise you that there is plenty of what I call Facebook evangelists out there that have this unbiblical, anti-church, lone, lone ranger theology that is being propagated to foster division in the body of Christ. I call them keyboard warriors. They hide behind their screens, spewing all their divisive rhetoric. And it's easy to be bold when you aren't held accountable for your words. But that is why the Bible says that we have to stay grounded. Okay, I'll give you some more scripture because y'all looking at me a little funny, but I'm about to bring this home to you. Matthew 7 and 24, look at this. He said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, 
and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Rain came down, streams rose, winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Let me go ahead and prepare you right now on the first Sunday of 2024. Y'all ready? Here it is. Storms will come this year. I know some of y'all are already mad you came to church today because you, to be, you want me to tell you how, how big God's going to bless you this year. But I'm going to tell you the truth. This year, the wind will beat against your spiritual house. Every day will not always be tiptoeing through the tulips and smelling the daisies. There are going to be some days you might get punched in the proverbial gut. You might get the wind knocked out of you. You might get sucker punched by life. But the good news, somebody say the good news. Y'all didn't hear me. Say the good news. The good news is that because you are disciplined and you built your house on the rock whose name is Jesus Christ, when the devil shows up in your life and tries to rob you of your faith, Here's a good word. You're not going to have to fuss. You're not going to have to cuss. You're not going to have to argue with him. All you got to say is, oh, no, you don't. The battle is not mine but the Lord's. I am not arguing with you. I'm not going around these mountains. I've been circling with you any longer. I am not playing with you anymore. The battle is not mine. It's the Lord. You can say what you want to say and do what you want to do, devil. But I'm telling you right now, it's not going to knock me off of my foundation. If you want a good word for 2024, here it is. Tell the devil, no, you don't. Y'all didn't get it. I want you to think about everything the devil tried to mess with you in last year. I want you to think about how he messed with your marriage. He messed with your family. He messed with your money. He messed with your kids. He messed with your job. He messed with your health. He messed with your mind. I want you to look back over that. But now on the first Sunday of this year, I want somebody to declare, oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm not going down that road again. I've got a strong foundation. I am not being swayed. I'm not being moved. I am I'm standing right where I am. Why? Because this is what's happening. I'm building something in my life. I'm building something. I'm building my faith. I'm building on my marriage. I'm, I'm building on my devotion to Him. I'm building my life. I'm sorry, but this year I don't have time for grumpers, belly achers, and pretenders anymore. I'm building my character. I'm building, I'm, I'm becoming more courageous this year. I'm becoming more conscientious this year. I'm becoming more compassionate this year. I'm becoming more humble. Uh-oh. I'm becoming more humble this year. I'm more focused. I'm more intentional. I'm going to be patient, but I'm also going to be persistent because I refuse to back off on what God has already promised for me and my house, and I'm going after it with a tenacity. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to, be, I'm going to wait. I'm going to build in the season that he tells me to build in, but I promise you when it's all said and done, when the dust settles, I will be what he says I will be. I need a witness right there. Catch somebody and tell them, I'm not giving up this year. Why? Because God isn't done with me yet. I know he's not done. The fact that I got breath in my body and strength in my bones, and he woke me up this morning and set me on my way, lets me know that... Somebody shout, keep building, keep building, keep building. Don't stop now because what I need you to recognize is that you are more resilient than you thought you were. Y'all ever seen, I wish I had one, I don't. Y'all ever seen them punching bags we used to have as a kid? You know, it's just weighted at the bottom. You rear back and hit that thing as hard as you want. That looked good, didn't it, y'all? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't do that too many more times so my back will be out, but... You ever had one of them punching bags as a kid? 
And you like, you like, you, you go through and you just like, you like, and you knock it down. What did that thing do? Bounce right back up. You look at that, nah, uh, you hit it again. And what did it do? Bounce right back up. Every time you hit it, it come back up. You couldn't knock that thing down and it would stay down unless you let all the air out of the bag. But as long as there was air in the bag, y'all missed it. You missed it. You missed it. I said as long as there's air in the bag, the bag kept coming back up. That is why you have to determine that as long as I got breath in my body, I will let everything in me that has breath, praise the Lord. You can knock me down, but I'm coming right back up again. You can take me down, but I promise you, I got a bounce back in my spirit that says I will not go down for the count. I'm. You better slap somebody and tell them I got a bounce back in me. I'm coming back. I'm bouncing right back up. Had the wind knocked down, but I still got breath in my body. And as long as I got breath in my body, I will bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, I'm going to keep building, boo-boo. You can sit there and act like you don't have it, but I got breath. I'm going to keep... Somebody better shout, keep building, keep building, keep building. Keep building. It's hard, but keep building. You know what I decided in 2024? I decided to keep on. That's what I decided to do. I decided to keep on. The old saint said you got to keep on keeping on. I'm going to keep on keeping on. I've made up my mind that the devil can hit me with his best shot, but I'm coming right back up again. And every time I come back up, I'm coming up stronger, I'm coming up better, I'm coming up wiser, I'm coming up a little better in form than I was last time because I didn't see the punch coming, oh, but I dodged it this time because I saw that thing coming, oh, I saw that, no, you can't do that, no, uh, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep on dodging, I'm going to keep moving, I got to dodge and weave. But if I ever get close enough to the devil that I can lay my hands on him, I promise you, I'm going to hit him with the best praise that I got. I'm going to hit him with the best shot that I got. I'm going to hit him with everything that's in me. And I'm going to let him know you done messed with the wrong one this time, brother. You done messed with the wrong family. You messed with the wrong husband. You messed with the wrong daddy. You messed with the wrong pastor. I'm coming back with a fierceness inside of me that lets hell know I will not be moved. I'm like a tree that's planted by the pure waters. I shall not be moved. I'm standing. After I've done all that I know to do, I'm still going to stand. Slap three people and tell them I'm still standing. I'm, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing because there's a fight that's in me right now. I got to fight for this faith. I got to fight for the good thing. I got to fight for the good news. I got to fight for the gospel. I'm done with your pretending belly ache and grumping self. I'm standing for this right here. I wish I had a hundred people that would make up your mind right now. I will not give up as long as he's not done with me. I meant it to win it, boo-boo. Tell five people around you, I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. I'm in it to win it. There's more for my house this year. There's more for my life this year. There's more for my peace, my mind, my joy, my kids, my... Woo! My God, I feel something stirring all over this room. I refuse to give up on the plan that God has for me. It's a good plan. It's a good plan. It's a good plan. I feel something in this place. Woo! 
Woo! Mmm. 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 I'm looking around this room, and you know what I see? I see tenacious people. I see, I see people that's got to bounce back in them. I see people that are resilient. You all look at somebody and tell them, I'm resilient. I, I'm, you know, when, 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 when kids are younger, they can go through stuff, right? And you think that has just scarred them for life. And three hours later, they don't even remember what even happened to them, right? I pray for you this year that you will forget about all the junk from the devil. You will let that mess just become banked in the back corners of your mind. And you will forget that the devil even targeted you in the first place. Because this year, the Lord's plan for you is so much greater than what you could even think, what you could even imagine in your mind. God, God is building something in your life. And it's a good plan. But you got to stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. I remember when I was a kid, I used to watch A-Team. Y'all remember the A-Team? I'm not talking about them new movies they made. That's junk. Y'all get on your feet. I'm done. I'm out. Go ahead tonight. I'm not talking about the new movies. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Mr. T. B.A. Baracus. Hannibal. The Mastermind. Face. Y'all remember all them? Murdoch, fly anything. But you had to knock B.A. out to get him on the plane. <laughs> and every, every, every episode, man, it was like, it was like they, they, they saved the town, right? A whole town. While on the run from the army. That is not a word for anybody in this room, so don't go on the run. They've saved the whole town, right? The van comes jumping. Boom, it lands 30 feet in the air. You're like, how in the world did that van not fall apart? Old beat up van. How in the world did they make all that in two hours? Y'all, you ain't ever wondered that? It's like, how did they make all them weapons in an hour? <laughs> so crazy. They built a house in an hour. But inevitably, after every episode, when the credits would roll and it would all be over with and the dust settled, they would win, right? I don't know if you remember this, but Hannibal, the lector, he'd always, the, 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 the leader, would always say at the end of the episode, he said, what now? He said, I love it when a plan comes together. Do you remember that? I love it when a plan comes together. I have this image of God looking down on you today. And he's looking at all the fighting that you had to go through. He's looking at all the pain. He's looking at, he's looking at the miraculous things that he did that you cannot explain. Y'all going to get this in a minute. This analogy is lining up. He's looking at all of that, and I believe God is sitting up in heaven. And I don't think he has a cigar in his mouth, but I believe God's sitting up in heaven. And he's going, you know what? I see Jarvis Sanchez. Man, I love it when a plan comes together in his life. He's looking up in heaven. Scuba, he says, man, look at Scuba down there. Killing it. He said, I love it when a plan comes together in his life. Pastor Mike, Sarah, he's looking at all the change you went through this year and how hard it's been on your family and the unexpected transitions and he's looking at it and going, man, I love it when a plan comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. It's come together in your life. Now here's the thing about plans. Sometimes plans change. I've, we were... I remember when we had the plans on building this building right here, and, and, uh, and me and Dad were looking at it, you know, and we were talking about things, and there was a blueprint, there was a plan, but him being Mike Cowart, the plan changed. We did things that were not on the plan. 
we came in and ran conduit, and I think these platforms over here, they wasn't on the plan, but we made it a part of the plan because the plan had to change. It had to shift a little bit. This little stage right here, this was not in the original plans and blueprints of the building, but we later realized that we needed to add something on, and so we came in and we changed the plans a little bit. And now I look today and I'm going, man, I want to do something different up here and get this wood and this carpet off and do something different with the stage. One day we will. And I'm looking at it and going, I want to change some stuff over here because the blueprint was good for its time. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me because you don't like changing the blueprint and the plan. But I'm here to let you know this morning that you need to be ready this year for shifts in your plans. And when God shifts and changes the plan, go with it. Just go with it. Why? Because it's going to be better than what you thought it was going to be. That's why. But I love it because this is what God is saying. I love it when a plan comes, comes together. Some things are coming together in your life this year, and I declare that over you in the name of Jesus. It may not be everything that you dreamed, and it may not be everything that you thought it was going to be, but I declare over you that it's going to be better than what it is right now. And that the plans are coming together. But here's the key to it all. And I'm done and I'm going to pray and we're going to get out of here. The key to it all is this. Is you got to have a made up mind. Be disciplined. Intentional. Work the plan. Change some things. Make some modifications in your own life if you have to. But do what you got to do to see the plan come to fruition in your life. Don't get stuck in one state. Don't get stuck in last year. Last year might have been great for you. That's wonderful. I'm glad you had a stellar year. That's not everybody's testimony. Maybe it was good, but guess what? This year can be better than good. I want good, and then I want better, and then I want his best for my life. That's what I want. But whatever it is, keep building and stick to the plan. Amen this morning? You get anything out of this, put your hands together today and let's thank the Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody say, I'm grounded. Now I say it again. Say, I'm grounded. I have a strong foundation. I'm building my life in Him. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. If you're standing in this room this morning and maybe things were not what you thought they were going to be last year, maybe this year has even started off a little rocky for you. Maybe you've had a stream of years that has been rocky for you. I want you to know that there is a God that loves you. And he's got a good plan. It's a good plan. But I need you to receive it. I need you to make up your mind that, that you know what? <laughs> I'm going to do what I have to do in my life to line up with His will. If it takes discipline, if it takes making changes, my wife and I, we have, we have purposed that we're going to get up and walk every day. We're eating better this year. We've already started out. We slipped yesterday. <laughs> Thanks to Wani and Mike Rivera, they fed us stuff that was, you know, good. It was real good, but it wasn't on my plan. I get back on my plan tomorrow. You realize you can do that? Y'all missed it. Do you realize that he's the God of second chances, third chances, fourth chances, fifth chances, sixth, 354 chances? Amen? That's the God that we serve. And I believe he's given you another chance right here today to live better for him, to serve him better. Well, wait, to even give your life to him. Maybe you're in this room and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. You haven't said, you know what, I'm completely devoted and I am going to live for him I'm giving it all to him. I'm, I want him to be the Lord and the director of my life. If you're standing in this room this morning and you haven't made that commitment to him, that's the first thing you need to do. Because I promise you this, if you'll start headed towards him, he'll meet you halfway. Whew. That's the God that I serve. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I'm going to do this quick today. 
If you're standing in this room this morning and Jesus is not the Lord of your life, you're not saved. You haven't given him your all, your whole life. You don't even know what that means. You don't even know how to, where to begin. Then that's why you're in here. God brought you to the right place today. Because this is a room where you will be loved and accepted and we can lead you. We can show you. We can give you the tools and the resources to help you live your life for him. If you're standing in this room today and he is not the Lord of your life, you have not prayed that prayer of dedication and salvation and made change. Oh, Because it's not just enough just to say some words. There's got to be a change in your life. Your habits have to change. Your, your lifestyle has to change. If you haven't done that, then guess what? You're in the right place. And if that's you, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to count to three. And when I do, I want you to shoot your hand up just as high as you can. If you're ready today to say, I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. I need to start this year right. If that's you, on the count of three, I want you to shoot your hand up. As quick as you can and hold it up. You ready? One, two, and three. Put that hand up in the air right now. I'm ready to give it all to him. Come on, there's hands going up all over this room. All over this room. They're go okay, I'm going to let you know that you're not alone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I see eight. Do I see nine? I see a ninth hand up back there. There are nine people in this room right now that are saying, I got to give it all to him. I can't, I can't play this game no more. i got to give it to him. Put your hands down and look up here at me. We want to pray with you. We want to pray this prayer of salvation with you. And I'm going to ask you to make a real bold step now. And it's an actual step. We're going to celebrate you. But as we celebrate you, I need you to get out of your seat. I need you to come meet me down here in the front. If you're bold enough, I want you to come meet me in the front down here. And we're going to pray a prayer with you. And as we pray that prayer with you, your life is about to get completely flipped upside down. On the count of three, I want you to get out of your seat and get down here real quick. Real quick. One's already moving. One, two, three. That's you right there. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get out of your seat. Meet me down here. Meet me down here. This is it. Today's the day of change. Live Oak, you better celebrate these people in this room today. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. This is what it's about, man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven people right here in the front ready to give their life to Jesus Christ. Man, what a day. Woo! So look up here at me, ladies and gentlemen. This is, um, this is not a complicated thing, right? The Bible says in Romans 10 that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, that you will be saved pretty simple it's admitting that you know what I've, I've fallen short and I've done some things wrong but today I want to make a change in my life and do the best I can to live for him the rest of my life so what we're going to do is is we're going to pray a prayer with you I'm going to say this prayer out loud and I'm going to ask you to repeat it after me and then just so you know that you're not by yourself everybody the, the other 600 people behind you are going to pray this prayer along with you to let you know that they're excited about the decision that you're making today. Am I right, Live Oak? Y'all ready? You got to say it out loud. You got to believe it in your heart. That's what it is, man. Let's pray. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I'm lost without you. But I want to give my life to you right now. Jesus, I believe that you died for me. And I believe that you rose again on the third day. Thank you for doing that for me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for redeeming me. Thank you for washing away my sins and making me whole. I give my life to you right now. And from this moment forward, I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I need y'all to do what you know to do back there in the back. And let's, come on, man. 
There's angels in, re in heaven rejoicing. That's where we come in. We got to join in. This is what it's about right here. So this is what we're going to do. Mr. Roy is right here. He is going to take you guys back over here to this room. Get your information. We're not going to bother you. We want to encourage you. We're going to tell you how we're going to help you to walk this thing out now that you've given your life to him. Because it would be wrong of us to say, let's pray this prayer and then just to turn you back out there and say, figure it out on your own. We're not going to do that. We're going to help you figure it out. We're going to help you to know what it looks like. Amen? You know what I love about this? How young this crowd, this group is right here down front, man. I'm telling y'all, man, God's doing something. Amen? One more time, put your hands together for them as they go that way. Y'all just go that way with Mr. Roy. He'll take care of you real quick. Amen. Amen. Now, were you glad you were in the house of the Lord this morning? All right, listen. I appreciate you being here on the first Sunday, but we need you to come back next Sunday. Because next Sunday, we're going to do it again, and we're going to give God praise again in our life. We're going to encourage you. We're going to help you to know what it means to live for Him for real. We're going to empower you here at Live Oak Church. So please come back and join us. Take advantage of everything that you see going on. Go to the Church Center app. Sign up for discipleship groups, the life groups. Get plugged in. If you can help us with serving, we need your help. Please see Pastor Mike. And uh, we just pray that you have a blessed, blessed week in Jesus' name. Amen? All right, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Have a fantastic week in the name of Jesus. God bless you.